Welcome basketball fans to today's Southwestern Athletic Conference contest between the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley and your home standing Tigers of Jackson State. Jackson State and the Southwestern Athletic Conference takes great pride in the conduct and good sportsmanship of all SWAC student athletes and coaches. We encourage you, the spectators, to support your team in a positive manner while at the same time showing respect to the participants, team personnel, officials, and other spectators in attendance. Jackson State and the SWAC have the greatest fans in all of college sports, and we thank you in advance for your cooperation and support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, introducing the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley. A 6'2 senior out of Mendenhall, Mississippi, number three, Terrence Jordan. 6'2 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, number 13, Grant Arrington. 6'8 senior from Bessemer, Alabama, number 12, Amos Sturdivant. 5'10 senior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 25, Kevin Burwell. 6'8 senior from Lansing, Michigan, number 32, Paul Crosby. The head coach of the Delta Devils, Mr. Sean Lewis. His assistants are Chico Potts and Brian Ellis. Welcome to ESPNU Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Tonight, the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils, fresh off a last minute win to take the top spot in the SWAC, now face their arch in-state rivals, the Jackson State Tigers at the Lee Williams Assembly Center in Jackson, Mississippi. The Delta Devils already wrapping up the conference regular season title and the number one seed, a win tonight, and they tie the SWAC record for most conference wins in a season. And a great Monday evening to you, Rich Hollenberg, along with former national champion with the NC State Wolfpack, Derek Wittenberg. And Derek, only the Kentucky Wildcats, ranked number one in the country, can boast a better conference record and winning streak, better than the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Their non-conference schedule, they got run over. They were 1-11, but they've been the runaway train, 16-0 in conference. Outstanding job of Mississippi Valley State. They've been an unbelievable run right now. But watch out, Jackson State has won the last four out of five. These two, two in-state rivals don't like each other. This is going to be a ball game today. No love lost. Let's go to one-on-one. -on -one. And we chose two coaches who have a lot of big-time basketball experience under their belts. Yeah, Tavesta Anderson, a veteran coach. He coached as an assistant coach at Auburn and Georgia. Did an outstanding job of recruiting there. Won the NCAA at Murray State and here at Jackson State. And Sean Woods, the hot young coach, doing an outstanding job here at Mississippi Valley State. He's on a roll, and his team is hot. Let's take a look at your starting lineups. First for the Delta Devils, a veteran club. Number two scorer in the swag is Terrence Joyner. He's joined by the top assist man in conference, Kevin Burwell. Brent Arrington as well. Those are the guards. Paul Crosby, Amos Studevant up front. For JSU, a patchwork lineup since losing their top two players. Kelsey Howard, the top scorer now, along with Jonathan Lewis, Terrell Taylor, Josh Armstrong, and Davon Jones. 
There's Sean Woods riding a 16 game winning streak. That's the third or the third longest streak in college basketball, 16 games. And Tavester Anderson, a 483 winning percentage, his ninth season. He knows all about mid-major solid programs coming from Murray State, as you mentioned, Derek. Oh, he's a veteran coach, very experienced coach, and uh, it's the pupil versus the teacher out there today. Yep. Let's see who wins. It's going to be a tempo game here, Rich. The Mississippi Valley want to get up an up-tempo game. They average 70 points a game. Jackson State wants to slow it down. They only average in 54 points. Let's see who controls the tempo. That's the Delta Devils in the forest green and white road uniforms. They're going right to left on the screen. You're going to see a lot of zone defenses by Jackson State. They want to slow the game down and force Mississippi State to shoot over. Burwell, Crosby misses. And the first rebound of the game goes to Jackson State. Inside. Davon Jones with the left hand. Pretty shot off the window. And that's what they worked on in practice early on Sunday, getting the ball inside. They believe they have the size advantage against Mississippi Valley State, who's got a lot of speedy guards and like to shoot three-point shots. They're going to attack Mississippi Valley on the inside, on the offense. First shot is good from Burwell. He opens the scoring for the Delta Devils with a three. That's why Mississippi Valley State is very dangerous. They can knock down the three. Has about seven of eight threes per game. They want to get out and run and shoot the three-point shot. There's Burwell. He was outmanned in transition. And you see Mississippi Valley State. What a year it's been from little Itabina, Mississippi. About two hours away here from the state capitol. Famous alum, of course, maybe the greatest football player of all time in Jerry Rice. Oh, wait a minute. Jackson State may have something to say <laughs> about that. But outstanding job by this Mississippi Valley team. Sean was outstanding job here. And, uh, talking to his president. Burwell's Dr. Oliver, she is very, very pleased with the direction of this program and is excited about the future of Mississippi State Valley. Burwell's two for two from three-point range. Inside again, they come up empty. That was Studevant with the rebound. Well, in the zone, you got to be cognizant of all the three-point shooters on the Mississippi Valley State team. They could knock him down, and Joyner, you know, he's, he's a threat as well. you got to pay attention and get on those three-point shooters. A third three-pointer. That's from Brent Arrington from your neck of the woods, Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> and, uh, you gotta, you got to be aware of these guys. They can shoot it from deep. And when you're in a zone defense, sometimes you, you get a tendency to fall asleep and not cover the shooters. And so far, the tempo is going the Mississippi Valley way. Crosby swipes it away with the block. Burwell tries for three again. This time off the mark. The rebound goes to Armstrong. It's knocked out of bounds. Oh, give me that, and I get Rich. my first assist of the game. I'd like to get a little shot in there. <laughs> Pass it to me, Rich. <laughs> I'll be the assist man. You could be the shooter. I right, talk to this kid Burwell. I love this kid. He's an absolutely fabulous player. Not only can he shoot the basketball, he's an excellent point guard. The last game we had down in Adabina, he had no turnovers for 40 minutes in that game against Texas Southern. So he can do it on both ends. He's put together, isn't he? Looks like a running back. Jackson State looking for some offense. Jones goes to the line, who's fouled and will shoot the first two free throws of the game. Kevin Burwell, that's his first, first team foul. Right now, Mississippi Valley State is knocking down the three, finding those open holes in the zone, and Burwell is feeling it right now, squared up to the basket, and then with his hands ready, and then knocking down three-point shots. It's going to be threes versus twos. And let's see if Coach Anderson makes an adjustment in that zone and getting out on those three-point shooters. First substitution of the game. Tavester Anderson puts number 20 in white. Sidney Coleman in for the Tigers. Left-hander Jones goes one for two from the line. So it's a 9-3 ball game. Delta Devils with the lead and the ball. 
And another three-pointer, this one from Paul Crosby. Crosby's used to hitting those with the time running out. Well, there's the a lot of time left. Crosby used to hit the game winner. But I, as I said before, this, this team is dangerous from the three-point line. Crosby, they have four or five guys that can knock down a three-point shot. And Travesse Anders may have to look at changing the defense to stop this three-point barrage. This is vintage Sean Woods, Kentucky Wildcat type basketball. And we talk about Paul Crosby shooting from distance. This is what happened the last time he got the ball with a three-pointer. Game on the line, clinches the SWAC championship with that shot. A little step back there. You had to be aware of him. This big guy is so versatile offensively. He can score inside. He can shoot the three. He's a tough matchup for any team in any league. Throw a name at you. Reminds me of Oliver Miller from back in the Arkansas days, right? No question. This kid is talented and love watching this kid play. Jones off the mark. Jackson State with the rebound, though. Fresh 35. I was going to say Charles Oakley with a jump shot. Oh. <laughs> but right now, Jackson State's going to look to get the ball inside because they have a size advantage in there and try to slow down. This Mississippi Valley State's game. That was good D by Arrington, who's wearing number 13 tonight. Normally wears number 11. Burwell for three again. Oh, let's get, get the fire holes and put put a, put the fire on this guy. This guy is hot. He's knocking down threes from all over. Sean Woods loves what he sees. Tavester Anderson says, let me put on the fireman's cap. Coach Anderson's going to have to do something about his defense. He may have to change defenses here. They're dangerous from the three-point line. That's five threes so far, so let's see if he changes his defense. Here's the last time down the floor for Mississippi Valley State, and you talk about transition threes. That's something that Sean Woods knows all about, playing under a Rick Pitino club. Absolutely. When you're in transition, nobody has a man, and you're running back. You have to communicate with your Jackson State and find the shooters. At that time, they didn't find Burwell. He could knock it down. Hey, he reminds me of another number 25 that can shoot the three. Wittenberg, I wore number 25 <laughs> myself, so I love all the guys that can shoot three-pointers. This kid is hot right now. They got to change the defense. I would like to see Coach Anderson. He may have to switch and go to man-to-man, -to -man, and that's going to be in Mississippi State Valley's favor, but he had to change the defense at some point. And first things first, they need a bucket or two so they can possibly set up some defensive pressure. Well, it's going to be difficult right now, but just because they lost those three, you, you lose your best player of the year, you lose your three best players, Ashley, and your player of the year, and now you're just relying on Kesley Howard, who's their leading scorer. He's going to have a big night in order for Jackson State to have a chance. Talking about Kelsey Howard, number 12 in white. There he is with the basketball. His first shot of the game, in and out. Rebound. Jackson State can't get it to go. Well, that's unfortunate. There's that point blank range. He's got to finish those shots inside. Those are easy layups. Here's Crosby. Look at the big man handle the ball. Crosby. Short on the three. Rebound. Raymond Gregory has just checked in for Anderson's club. That time a little short by Crosby at that time, but better job that time defensively by Jackson State in transition. Like you mentioned, Rich, they picked him up that time and found these three-point shooters in transition defense. There's a mismatch, the smaller guard on Crosby. And the follow slam by Gregory. Good follow that time by Gregory, recognizing there's going to be a little, little shot coming up a little short. That's what they have to do. If they can't make shots, they got to attack the offensive rebound and get some easy putbacks. Five and a half minutes into the game is just their second field goal. Crosby off the mark again. Here comes Jackson State looking to make a little mini run and get back into this. And they can get back. There's plenty of time. They've had some success going inside. Just be patient. You're at home here. Just go inside and try to get Mississippi Valley State in foul trouble. Kelsey Howard bodied and fouled by Terrence Joyner, number three. And Gregory here with the follow-up and the slam for Jackson State. They're getting back in this game.
ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's the sure side of a good time. Here we go. And in part by Polaris. See the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicle now at your local dealer. Welcome back to Jackson, Mississippi, part of Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils undefeated in conference at 16-0, have sprinted out to a 15-5 lead over the Jackson State Tigers. 14-05 left in the game in the first half. Rich Hollenberg, Derek Wittenberg, and you look at Tavester Anderson's school profile with Jackson State, 8,500 students in enrollment, and we mentioned that Jerry Rice might be the best football player of all time, and Jackson State would make the argument, no, it's our guy, Walter Payton. Yeah, Walter Payton was pretty good, but also you have Eddie Payton here, who's a golf coach, who's doing an outstanding job here at Jackson State and holding his own. All these banners up here <laughs> are, are, are Eddie Payton's and uh, outstanding golf coach. Who doesn't Definitely love that game of golf? Three, two, Delta Devils, a blistering 71.4% from three-point range to start this contest. That, that's, that's their M.O. They knocked down the three-point shot. They lead this conference on the tops in the, in the country and knocking down three-point shots, and that's the danger of this team. They can make a huge run at any time knocking down that three-point shot. But I like what Jackson State is doing now. They're starting to get the ball inside, try to slow this team down, and get them in foul trouble. Nice touch from the big man from the free-throw line, normally just a 62% free-throw shooter. Knocks them both down. And it's a 15-7 Delta Devils lead. Coach Anderson elects to stay in the zone, but they're going to extend it out and try to cover these three-point shooters. Burwell feeling it. You got to get extended out a little bit more, though, Rich, because Burwell is on fire. That time, they missed him again in the zone defense. You have to recognize a hot shooter, and you have to be there on the catch in order to stop him from taking that shot. 12 points all on three-pointers for Kevin Burwell. Normally, he's the assist man. He's tops in the conference in that category. Terrence Joyner, who's number two in the conference, number three in green, hasn't even scored yet, and yet Mississippi Valley State's up 18-9 right now. Well, Joyner, he will get in the act here pretty soon. You start to forget about him, and before you know it, he'll, he'll knock down a couple himself. So beware of Joyner. He's an explosive scorer. There he is with the ball, gives it to Crosby. Another three, off the mark. Rebound stays with the Delta Devils. And they're gonna get the traveling call on J. Cox. Well, tomorrow night ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader. First at seven Eastern, Ole Miss takes on Arkansas. Then at nine Eastern, Seth Curry and Duke battle ACC rival Wake Forest. The home court of college hoops on ESPNU. ESPN 3 and also streaming live on watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app Tuesday night. Coverage begins with the whip at 6.30 Eastern. And speaking of three-point shots, you're talking about Duke. Wow, Andre Dawkins and Seth Curry. They've been on the winning and losing end of some late game three-pointers. Man, those guys are knocking down three-point shots. Kelsey Howard. Gets his first two of the game. He's the leading scorer on the team now that Gennaro Bush, their top scorer in the preseason player of the year in conference, is out for the season. Another senior uh, point guard. Williams is out as well. Three of their top players are not on this basketball team. This team was predicted to do pretty well. And when you lose your three top players, you're going to struggle. And now Jackson State is has to play a, a, a virtually a young basketball team out here against a powerful Mississippi Valley State. The turnaround from Willie Reedus, no good, but he was fouled on the play. He'll shoot two as Jackson State looks to cut into this lead that Mississippi Valley State's beaten with 11.57 to go. SWAC basketball returns after this.
back in Jackson, Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State, and their in-state rivals, the Jackson State Tigers, battling it out on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, an 18 to 11 lead for the Delta Devils with 11.57 to go. And it's been a tough season for Jackson State, having to deal with the loss of Christian Williams, who you see here. He was number one in assists, number three in points per game. And of course, Gennaro Bush, who had his number retired before the game on senior night, he was the SWAC preseason player of the year, averaging 15 and a half on the season before he went out about 10 games ago. And another young man, Rob Williams, who's also out, he was a senior point guard. So virtually, they've lost almost 40 points a game and a lot of experience. This team would have been a whole different team if you were your, your three best players. You lose your three best players. And right now, they're still, although it is 11-18 right now, and they've been this barrage of three-point shots by Mississippi Valley State, Jackson State is back in this game. They're, they're really trying to slow the tempo down. Now they have to try to get out on these three-point shooters. If they can do that, continue to get the ball inside, they'll get back in this game. Should also be noted that Sean Woods has had to deal with his share of injuries too. Philando Jones, a starter. Jason Holmes, a veteran player. Both of those players not on the roster right now because of injuries as well. So even more impressive what the Delta Devils have done shorthand. Absolutely. Both of these coaches have done an outstanding job. You, you got to handle adversity when uh, players go down, especially your top players. And you got to keep, keep keep going and playing. And both of these coaches have, have carried their teams through. Crosby, tough shot off the window. It's good, and he has a chance at a three-point play. That's his first. This is an old-fashioned three-point play by Crosby. Usually they're knocking down three-point shots on the outside, but that's the way you attack a zone, too. Now they're starting to extend the zone and trying to cover the shooters. Now Crosby will be open in the middle, and now they found Crosby inside, and now he has the opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. Number one, William Pugh checking in for Sean Woods. You look at Paul Crosby at the line right now, and I – used an older reference of Oliver Miller, but he's got a body and a, and a style of game much like Draymond Green for Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans. And ironically enough, that's where he's from. He's from Lansing, Michigan. How did Izzo let him get away? I don't know how he let this kid get away, but he is an outstanding player. That's a good analogy with uh, Draymond Green. He's very similar. Draymond can shoot the three. He can do it inside, and so can Crosby. Here's Howard. Kelsey Howard is getting on track now. He has four points. An excellent job by, by Jackson State. Only a five-point game now. They've kind of slowed them down a little bit. And now they're back in this game. You're going to get a foul on the floor. You know, Derek, that's one thing about three-pointers. It could be fool's gold at some point. When you come out shooting as hot as Mississippi Valley State had, you have to realize that there's no way you can keep up that pace throughout an entire game. Well, not a well-coached team like Jackson State. He's made the adjustment. Coach Ennis is now to extend the zone. He's not going to allow these shooters to just get wide open shots now. And they're not going to make them all night. But more importantly, they, they've really made some nice adjustments and now have gotten themselves back in this game. Crosby, errant pass. Here's Howard. Oh, he tried to go up strong, and he's fouled by Pugh. Athletic play by number 12 in white, Kelsey Howard, the sophomore out of Vicksburg. The heady play that time by Kelsey Howard, jumping in the passing lane out of the zone, and now he was just going to attack the basket, and he was going to try to punch it for a big-time play for Jackson State. And that would a chance to cut this lead to three if he could knock down two free throws. He connects on the first. He's the best free throw, free throw shooter on the team. Fifth in the conference at 77%. They're six for seven from the line this evening so far. Good foul shooting team. A team that's very patient. You know, teams take on the personnel they coach. And coach Anderson doesn't panic. Very poised coach. Veteran coach. And his team is not panicked here. And they got him back in this game. And Jackson State comes away with a loose ball. Is Jonathan Lewis running the point, the junior, number 15 in white. They will take their time, a little burn. They're not going to go right away. They're going to kill some clock, and they're going to try to get the ball inside, see if they can get, get the City Valley State in the foul trouble. And with 10 to shoot, they're going to get Gregory for the travel. 
But that was unfortunate. That was a good entry pass to Gregory that time. He, he had one on one against Crosby and just got a little shuffle in there. But I'm sure that I'm sure they're not discouraged by that because that was an excellent look that Crosby. time by Jackson State. Long on the three. They've been cold ever since that torrid start. One of their last five. Joyner can't get on track yet. Nice rebound and follow. And this is where they're dangerous. Last time they had 16 offensive rebounds against Jackson State. That's what helped them win the game last time they, these two teams met. And they're very s sneaky about getting in there and get on that offensive glass. Oh, they're a smaller team. Gregory turns it over. There's a fast break in transition. Look out. Corjay Cox. Back to back buckets for the senior out of Washington, North Carolina. This team, this is what they want. They want to get an up-tempo game and get it up and down. And before you know it, it was a four-point game. Now they got an eight-point game. It's a dangerous time for Jackson State right now. They got to be careful. Take a look at this replay. And this is what we're normally used to seeing Kevin Burwell doing. Yeah, absolutely. Over his head. Man, what a pass and what a play. This is an exciting team to watch. You got to be careful with this team. Mississippi Valley State loves to get it up and down, get into their pressure. They like to speed you up, and they want to play fast. Jackson State's already in the bonus, so they'll shoot one and one. There's Howard with the free throw. Still just a seven-point game. It seems like all the momentum is with the Delta Devils, and yet it's single digits. They're doing a good job of staying in the game. Don't panic. As long as, long as Mississippi Valley State is not knocking down three-point shots, I think as long as Jackson State can get that ball inside and score, they can stay in this game. There's a three. Cox off the mark. Q with the rebound, but he gives it up. There's number 11 in white, Keasley Stewart. He's a freshman running the point right now. I'll just be patient. Let's try to go back into Gregory again, because I think he can he can do some damage against Crosby inside. Stewart way off the mark. Cox with the rebound. He's number five in green. Luka Pajovic off the mark on the three. Crosby amongst the white jerseys comes away with it and gets the foul. He'll go to the line and shoot two. See some sportsmanship between the two clubs. These guys know each other extremely well. And two classy guys and two classy programs here. These guys, these kids play hard, getting after it on the offensive glass. This is where Mississippi Valley State is dangerous. They love to go to the boards. They shoot those long threes, but they chase them and try to get after it on the boards. Crosby misses the first. Willie Reedus is going to check in, number 32 in white for Tavester Anderson. He brings some muscle to their Tigers lineup. Well, they're going to need a little muscle in there to try to keep Crosby off the offensive glass in there because right now they're doing a better job of defending the three-point shot, but now they have to get the rebound and keep Mississippi Valley State off the offensive glass. And it's not sexy to talk about, but keep an eye out for free throws right now. JSU shoots it at a 70% clip as a team, and they've knocked down almost all of theirs, as opposed to Mississippi Valley State, who struggled so far. And they, and they continue to go inside and draw. They, they're in the bonus right now. They can go inside and draw some fouls. They can get this game back at the pace that they want to play. Under 10 to shoot. And that's what Howard does off the mark on the three. Q with the rebound. And he had a good look that time. Just didn't knock it down, but... They're still back in this game. They got to be aware of this three-point shot. We're going to get a foul on the floor. And we'll have a timeout on the floor as well. 7.53 to go. Mississippi Valley State hot at the start, but Jackson State sticking around. We got a six-point game, and we'll be back from Jackson, Mississippi right after this.
Delta Devils on the road looking to stay unbeaten in the SWAC. They lead Jackson State 24-18 with 7.53 to go. Wednesday night, ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, St. John's meets Ashton Gibbs at Pittsburgh. Then at 9 Eastern, a Big Ten matchup between Iowa and Nebraska, the home court of college hoops on ESPNU, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Wednesday night, coverage begins with the whip at 6.30 Eastern. And let's take a look now at the NCAA freshmen who are leading their leagues in scoring. And you look at St. John's, who we talked about just a moment ago. They not only have D'Angelo Harrison and Mo Harkless, they've got a whole roster full of youngsters. Outstanding class. This team is, is their future is so bright right now. This St. John's team is very young. They're one of the youngest basketball teams in the country. And look at your stat track. Mississippi Valley State still shooting it well from distance, but not nearly as well as when they started off. And zero assists so far for the Tigers of Jackson State. They are next to last in the NCAA in that category, but they get a bucket there. Cut the lead to four. They're attacking Mississippi Valley State inside. Recognize they have an advantage in there and getting them in foul trouble. And good job by Jackson State. That's why they're staying in this game. It's a four-point game. Here's a look at the last bucket, and they get their first assist of the game. And this was in transition right now. Kept Mississippi Valley State sleeping a little bit. They didn't get back. A little chip, chippy shot in there, and now this lead is down to four. Mississippi Valley State has gotten really cold from three-point land. They started off five and seven, and now a one of seven is shooting the three, and that's allowed Jackson State to get back in the game. A lot of respect between these two programs, a lot of competition. Double foul charge to number 15, Jonathan Lewis of uh, the Tigers. And Sean number Woods can't believe it. The officials are saying there was a double foul called. Sean Woods says, who was my guy? I thought they called a blocking uh, call, and it was a double foul. I didn't understand the call there, but remember, Rich, Jackson State has the conference record, 17, 17 conference wins with 17 and 1. In, in, in 2010, and now Mississippi Valley State is trying to tie that record. If they can get a win here, they'll have 17 with a chance to go undefeated in the conference. Crosby, way off the mark. Howard sky for the rebound, and Reedus comes away with it. Good job by. Jackson State, they're starting to contest those shots. They're not leaving those guys wide open. And Crosby didn't have a lot of space and, and missed that three-point shot that time. Aaron Pass. Reedus was telling Jonathan Lewis, I was looking for the back cut, and it didn't happen. We have a lot of young guys on the court. Communication is, is vital. They haven't played together that much. And once they start to get their communication, they, they will get on the same page on that play. Nice look by Burwell. Cox wasn't expecting it. If you're Sean Woods, are you telling your team, get the ball to our number one scorer, Terrence Joyner? He hasn't gotten uh, in the uh, scoring column yet. Well, right now, they do. Jackson State, give them credit. They're doing a good job of really denying him and being aware of where he is on the floor. And now they've done a better job with Burwell as well, who was hot early. Now they've extended that zone, and now they've got to figure it out. And now they they got the pace right where they want it. Slow. It's a four-point game, and that's that's the key to this game, the tempo. Who's going to control the tempo and, and get it down to the tear pace of the game? Here's Reedus double. He splits that double team. And that was a half shot, half lob from Jonathan Lewis that goes out of bounds and was 6.01 on the clock or 6.07 on the clock. It'll be Delta Devils basketball. Looked like a pass. It looked like a shot. Didn't quite know what he was thinking there, but... A little pressure on their own, a little 2-2-1, two, two, trying to you know, throw this team off, slowing down, a little token pressure. And they, they like to stay in the zone, more on the 3-2 look. Very well. A little playground jump shot there, more like a teardrop in the lane that was off the mark. And Lewis brings it up. 
Mississippi Valley State has gotten cold from the outside, and now it's a good pace for Jackson State. All they need to do is get the ball inside and see if they can get a score. Reedus does just that. Willie Reedus, they call him Bam Bam here at Jackson. Well, he's a Bam Bam. I think this guy may be playing a little football too. What a body on this kid. Boy, that, was a, that was not an easy shot in there. Kind of dipped under and over and kind of scooped up a little layup in there and now brought this team back. It's only a two point game. Studebaugh inside. And they're gonna get Crosby with the three second call. And how about this, Derek? After that torrid start by the Delta Devils, Tavester Anderson's Jackson State Tigers could take the lead with a three-point field goal this time down the floor. Excellent defense that time, really protecting the paint that time. Crosby trying to work inside, but that zone collapsed on him and caused a turnover. Delta Devils started six for 12 from the field since then. They've sputtered three for 10. Good paces right here. Well, Jackson State, well, they got to get the ball inside where well, they had a lot of success early in this game. Good hands by Crosby. Seven on the shot clock. They're going to have to hustle. Big guys handling it out there. Reedus fires it up. And they're going to get him for a shot clock violation. That was almost oh. Derek Wittenberg to Lorenzo Charles. This play looks very familiar. This, this is a familiar play right here, Rich. A little alley oop here. Oh, whoa, almost got it there. Just a little time, a little short. Crosby on the miss, they can't follow it up either. Reedus clears for the Tigers. Oh, no, oh, no. Howard, amongst the bigs, gets swallowed up. Nice take to the hoop, but they're going to get an offensive foul on Terrence Joyner. Fourth leading scorer in the conference at 14.4 a game has yet to get in the scoring column tonight. Coming up, Sean Woods putting together an unforgettable season this year, but he was part of an unforgettable Kentucky club. More on that when we come back. ESPN Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Mississippi Valley State trail 2-0 at the start of this game. And since then, they have led the entire contest. They got out to an 18-7 start. JSU has gotten back in it 15-6 since. And there's Sean Woods' son. And talk about his daddy playing some college basketball. He was part of that unforgettable squad in 91-92. Billy Donovan was an assistant coach on that team. John Pelfrey, a player on that team. Of course, everybody remembers arguably the greatest game in college basketball back in 1992 when they lost that Elite Eight game to Duke in overtime at the Spectrum. Yeah, arguably maybe the second best game <laughs> of all time, but Sean Woods is on the other end of that. He made the shot to put Tucky, Kentucky ahead in that game, but he let Christian Leitner outdo him with that 
spectacular play at the end of the game. Foul line jump shot, knocks it down, and sends Duke to the Final Four and wins the national championship. Sean Woods did have his number 11 retired at the University of Kentucky, and if he keeps going the way he is this season with Mississippi Valley State, they may be hanging his name in the rafters at Itabina as well. He's doing an outstanding job. He's going to be one of the hottest coaches out there. This guy's come from nowhere, and he's got the pedigree, and he's built this program the right, the right way with good kids. And he's taking his time, and he's won year in, year in, and year out, and I can't tell you how good he's done. Get a foul, and it's going to go towards Mississippi Valley State. Here's a look at what they scheduled in the beginning of the season. It's really a tale of two seasons for these SWAC teams. They play tough teams on the road at the start of every season, but this year was especially brutal. At Notre Dame and DePaul, at number one UNC, South Carolina, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Florida. They went 1-11. Their only win was a double overtime win. As you see, the three-pointer from Terrence Joyner finally gets into the scoring column. Well, Rich, don't worry about Terrence Joyner. He, he's going to score in this basketball game. You can't hold him down for long. There's a lot of time left. And, you know, they're going to continue to shoot threes. They're not going to stop shooting because they've been missing. So this team is dangerous. As long as they don't knock a bunch of them down, Jackson State can stay in this game, be patient, get the ball inside. But they got to be aware of that this series Valley State run with those three-point shots. Five to shoot for the Tigers. Loose ball, Burwell comes away with it. It's a race to the hoop. And Burwell lays it in with the left hand. He has a game high, 14 points. That's his first two-point field goal this evening. That's a heady play that time by Burwell. Digging that loose ball out. We call those, as a coach, 50-50 balls, those loose balls. He got down there, and dug it out, and made a fantastic coast-to-coast -coast play for a layup. And he used his left hand. Jones loses the ball out of bounds. It'll go back to the Delta Devils. And just going back to that early season non-conference schedule, how difficult is it for Sean Woods to keep his team mentally positive after they take such a pounding at 1-11 and to start the season? I, I, I thought he was playing in the SEC, playing those all the SEC games. 11 games on road against the power six conferences in the country. And he has done an outstanding job to keep this team physically and mentally prepared for the conference and now he's on a roll. Brent Arrington with a circus shot. He got the bucket and the bump and he'll go to the line and shoot for a traditional three point play. You look at a kid like Brent Arrington a freshman out of Baltimore Maryland. He doesn't score very much averages about six point eight a game but that average for the season was boosted by a thirty three point effort against the North Carolina Tar Heels. Anytime you score 33 points against an ACC power like North Carolina, and at the time when they played them, Rich, they were number one in the country. This kid is confident. He gives them a lot of energy when he's in the game. He defends. He gets all the loose balls, and he's a key component in this run. He's the energy guy for Mississippi Valley State. So the three-point play is completed by Arrington. He has six points. And Sean Woods' team is back up to a 10-point lead. Okay. Remember, about a minute or so ago, it was a two-point game. Jackson State could have taken the lead with a three, and now it's back up to double digits. Well, that's what's dangerous about this team. you got to be aware that three-point shot all of a sudden can extend that lead very quickly. A good recognition right now. That's what you do against the pressure. Mississippi Valley State tried to pressure Jackson State, and they attacked the basket and came up with an easy play. Terrell Taylor notches his first two of the game. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in the first half. Inside, Crosby, jump hook, off the mark. And we'll get a foul going the other way. Be sure to stay with us at halftime for a preview of tonight's Texas Tech Baylor game. Plus, we'll have news from around the SWAC and highlights and stats from the first half. That's coming up on the ESPNU halftime report. Paul Crosby picking up his second foul. We'll have to keep an eye on that as Jackson State continues to try to pound the ball inside on offense. And that's been effective for them getting the ball inside 
with a minute and 25 to go. If they can knock these two free throws down, cut the lead to six, plenty of time to get back in this game with a minute and 25 left in the first half. Reedus, nice touch for a big man, 6'6", 260-pound sophomore out of Morton, Mississippi. Has his seventh point of the evening. He's done a good job coming off the bench and kind of neutralizing Crosby inside there, really keeping him off the glass. That time, Crosby had to come over his back, doing a good job of blocking out in there and kind of solidifying that inside defense for Jackson State. Gets the home court bounce on that one. He has eight points. And it's down to a six-point lead for Mississippi Valley State. It's a six-point lead, but they got to be very careful here not to let Mississippi Valley State get off a three-point shot and extend that lead to nine. Cox, air ball with the left hand. Coming up on one minute to go. It's a two-possession ball game. Being very patient right now, trying to get that ball inside, working the clock a little bit, see if they get a good shot. Lewis, not a good one there. Burwell comes away with it. Burwell gets hammered by Reedus. Goes down hard, and he'll shoot a pair. And a little extracurriculars going on as Burwell gets up. Sean Woods wants the intentional foul. Uh, I think the refs were right on top of that. Actually, Burwell initiated a little bit of the contact by going inside, trying to trying to use his body to shield himself off, and he ran into the Mack truck here, Rich, and <laughs> really knocked Burwell down. Good, clean play right there. Referees are on top of it. Not a malicious foul. These two classy teams right there. Good hard foul. Good play by both teams. And Birdwell did what any smart guard would do. He tried to hang on to the guy. Yeah. Well, well Birdwell is very heady, smart this time. Coming down, he's going to use his left hand. He's got to initiate the contact right here. Good job by both teams. He tried to grab his jersey right there, Rich, to kind of break his fall. And he did a little bit. Good play, and the referee's good job of really watching the video. So it is going to be an intentional foul. Two shots and the basketball for Mississippi Valley State. Tomorrow night, ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader, first at 7 Eastern. We stay in state. Ole Miss takes on Arkansas. Then at 9 Eastern, Seth Curry and Duke battle ACC rival Wake Forest, the home court of college hoops on ESPNU, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app Tuesday night. Coverage begins with the whip at 6.30 Eastern. So the officials just informing us there's a double technical. First on number 32, Willie Reedus, who committed the foul. And then also on number three, Terrence Joyner for the Delta Devils. Rich, I wasn't sure that time that looked like Burwell initiated the contact. And, and then it was a it was a collision there. But when the officials elected to call a, a flagrant one foul that time, intentional. And then a technical foul after the play. So with all that said, Burwell goes one for two from the free throw line on the foul. Yeah, right here, watch this, Rich. He initiates the contact. Burwell initiated the contact, and that's still a foul on, on Jackson State. But I, I thought it was a clean play, a hard foul. But the official saw otherwise and called it a flagrant, flagrant one. And, Give Mississippi State Valley a couple free throws for that. And the ball. My guess is that with Reedus' arm coming down the way it is, that's why they tagged him with the intentional foul. There's a three ball off the mark. They've gone silent from distance after starting off so hot. 18 seconds to go. Here's Gregory off the window. And it's a five-point game. 10 seconds to go, last shot time. Good, good job by the freshman point guard right there, really recognizing that Mississippi Valley the fell asleep a little Burwell. bit. And Burwell comes down and knocks down that three-point shot right before the half and extended the lead. 
There was still ample time left on the clock, but Kevin Burwell says, I'll just take it myself. Well, Burwell, he's had the hot hand all night. Why not? He's already knocked down five three-pointers. Let's knock down another one. So Mississippi Valley State ups their lead. 36-28 over Jackson State on the road, looking to stay perfect in the SWAT. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Toyota. First honoree, number 11, Takia Felder. This Macomb, Mississippi senior is being escorted by her mother, Sherry Felder, and her dad, Mr. Paul Christian. Takia is a key member of the team. Last season, she averaged seven points per game, had 52 assists and 32 steals. This season, she's averaging four points with 56 rebounds and 29 assists. One more round of applause for the senior from Macomb, Mississippi, number 11, Takia Felder. Our next senior honoree, number 32, from Brandon, Mississippi, Kiana McCarty. Kiana is being escorted by Miss Ava Calloway and Miss Dorita McCarty. Kiana is one of the better post players in the SWAT this season. She's currently ranked sixth in the SWAT in rebounding, first in field goal percentage, and first in block shots. Jackson State, give one more big warm round of applause to the senior from Brandon, Mississippi, number 32, Kiana McCarty. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me for your halftime entertainment. Mr. Jason London. Jason has opened on tour for Melanie Fiona, Tank, Dwelly, Omarion, BET Centric, and he just performed at the 2012 Super Bowl. He has a single that's dropping worldwide soon. Fans, let's 
It's halftime here in Jackson, Mississippi, as Mississippi Valley State takes on Jackson State. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our act. It's halftime here in Jackson, Mississippi, as Mississippi Valley State takes on Jackson State. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our action after these messages. Kevin Burwell, five for six from three-point land in the first half for the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. None bigger than that shot to end the first half. He has a game-high 18, and the Delta Devils lead it by eight at halftime in Jackson State. 
Welcome back in part of Big Monday presented by Bud Light, Rich Hollenberg, Derek Wittenberg. And Derek, we saw the Delta Devils come out in a torrid pace. They shot at five for seven from distance, cooled off a little bit, but you give the Jackson State Tigers defense some credit as well. Jackson State did a nice job in adjusting their defense, extending the defense, and then on the offensive side, slowed the basketball down, got it inside to Reedus and Gregory, really coming up with 14 points with those two big fellas and really getting Jackson State back in this game. Game, Rich. All right, second half coming up, but first let's take a look at some SWAC news and notes. What's going on in this conference? They've been an automatic bid, and right now the Delta Devils are in place to get that bid if they can sweep through the rest of this season and the conference tournament coming up in Garland, Texas. They are looking to tie the all-time record with a win tonight at 17 wins in the regular season. And how about Savalas Townsend? 16.4 points a game leads the SWAC. Yeah, he's an outstanding player. I've watched this kid. He can really get it done for Arkansas Pine Bluff, but more importantly, right now, that tournament is gonna be a fun tournament to watch in Dallas. These, anybody can win this tournament. As you know, last time, Jackson State was 17-1 in 2010. They won the regular season, but it was upset in the conference tournament. That conference tournament is going to be exciting. Starts in about a week in the championship game. will air right here on ESPNU. National news and notes for you. Kansas moves up to fourth in the top 25 after what could be the final border war game between Kansas and Missouri as members of the same conference. Missouri drops from third to eighth after that loss. And Jim Calhoun, our well wishes go out to him. It's good to hear that back in New York, he had successful spinal surgery and he's looking at a return on March 3rd. He's a warrior. This guy is a competitor. He's gonna come back and possibly lead this Connecticut team who's struggling a little bit with the NCAA term right now to defend the national championship. But more importantly, in the Big 12, the Big 12 championship goes to KU. Seven in a row, looking for eight in a row conference championships for KU. And that's what we're looking at since you mentioned KU. Let's take a look at UK and KU because they boast the two front runners for National Player of the Year. Well, Anthony Davis, the, the rejector, he lets nothing get inside. Kentucky is a hot team. There's no doubt in my mind that Kentucky is well balanced and has a chance now they only to go to the Final Four but win it all for Calipari. A couple of lottery picks right there as well in Davis and Robinson. We'll take you to break and come back with second half highlights and get you ready for first half highlights and get you ready for the second half. There's Gennaro Bush celebrating his number being retired. You know he wishes he was out on the court against Mississippi Valley State. His Tigers trailing by eight at halftime.
We're back with ESPNU Big Monday presented by Bud Light here in the Lee Williams Assembly Center in Jackson, Mississippi, where the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State lead the Jackson State Tigers. Courtside inside the Williams Assembly Center, Rich Hollenberg, Derek Wittenberg, and we're getting ready for second half swag play. Jackson State started off 2-0, but then you could call the Delta Devils the downtown Devils because they were on fire from distance. Right now, the key to this game right now is the three-point shot. Jackson State has to do a better job of defending it. Right now, they haven't made any three-point shots, but it's eight three-point shots for Mississippi Valley State and zero for Jackson State. And it was Kevin Burwell, the point guard, who leads the conference in assists, who was torrent from distance. But he can knock down the three-point shot. He was getting a lot of wide-open looks early. They have to recognize that he can shoot the deep three-point shot from 27 to 28 feet, and you got to get on him. But hats off to Jackson State. They made some adjustments, went inside to Gregory right here, and Redis, they really came off the bench and given uh, Jackson State 14 points to keep them in this ball game in the second half. Mississippi Valley State 8 for 18 from distance, but Jackson State stayed in it in part, going 10 for 12 from the free throw line. And Rich, this first five minutes is very important to see who establishes the game, who controls the tempo, and it looks like the Jackson State will try to get that basketball inside where they had a lot of success in their first half. And they do just that. And they get a foul to start the second half on Amos Studevant. This valley foul is on number 12. Good execution that time Amos right out of the, right out of the first half. Going into the second, second half. Execute that play, getting it inside. They continue to do that. They can get this Mississippi Valley State team inside in, in foul trouble. Jones comes up short in the high post. Here comes Burwell. Stay in the zone. Right now, they're kind of extending the zone. It looks like a 3-2 look. And let's see if Mississippi Valley State likes to go inside. Studevant, no good with the left hand. Here comes Jonathan Lewis. Howard slicing into the lane, no good. Studevant rebounds. Well, that was unfortunate timing. Point blank range. He's got to knock those, those layups down to cut this lead. It's an eight point lead. Beware of the three point shot right now to extend the lead for Mississippi Valley State. Joiner way off the mark. Here's Howard. Joiner bodies him up and collects a foul. Those are your two leading scorers on these teams, second and fourth in the conference. I'd like to see Howard right now get involved more on the offensive end. Maybe if he could knock down some threes Something himself and get Number Jackson one. State back Ooh, in this yeah. game. Kevin Burwell leading all scorers with 18. Four fouls on Terrence Joyner, so it's been a frustrating night for him offensively. And he might not see much playing time in the second half. Rebound goes to the Tigers. It's been one and done so far for Mississippi Valley State. This is a key part of the game for Jackson State. They had, it, they had it, plenty of opportunities to get back in the game. Both teams start off extremely cold, and Kevin Burwell looks like he took a shot to the midsection, and the officials noted it and whistled stop time. Friday at 11 p.m. Eastern, ESPNU presents College Game Day, covered by State Farm. North Carolina Duke for the first time a game day special the night before devoted to the greatest rivalry in college basketball. Tune in ESPNU Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Heck of a basketball game possibly playing not only for the seed for ACC tournament but getting a top seed in the NCAA maybe a first or a second seed whoever wins that ACC tournament. And the three pointer is good from William Pugh his first three of the game. Pugh is very capable. All these guys on this Mississippi Valley State team can knock down the three-point shot. You have to be aware and keep them in front of you because this, that three-point shot can open up the game. In this season, we've been celebrating the anniversary of the three-point shot here on the ESPN Networks. 
You're obviously a big fan about it, but you talk with most coaches and they say the three is really the big equalizer. If you can come out and shoot the three ball, much like Sean Woods' team has done tonight, you can knock off just about anybody in the country. All the top teams in the country has guys that are capable of knocking down the three-point shot. We can change the game. I think one of the most dangerous teams right now with Austin Rivers and Seth Curry and Dawkins, they have three guys that can really knock down the three-point shot. And they're going to be a dangerous team on a neutral court. So is Mississippi Valley State. They can knock down threes anywhere. So these teams are very capable of really extending the game with the three-point shot. Howard's five for six from the free throw line tonight. And it's down to a nine-point lead for Mississippi Valley State. Crosby off the mark. Studevant the rebound and Crosby right place right time. Good recognition by Studevant that time. This team can really hit the offensive glass knowing that they shoot a lot of three point shots. But Studevant is really good at attacking that offensive glass and what a little tip pass to Crosby for the easy layup. 11 points equals the largest lead of the game for the Delta Devils. In danger time right now for Jackson State. I like to see him get the ball inside where they had some success to kind of slow down this Mississippi Valley team. Lewis with the left hand. The follow goes. Let's see who they credit with that basket. Darrell Taylor gets credited with that basket as his fourth point. And there's a Delta Devils turnover. Howard. Rattles out. Loose ball. Here comes Mississippi Valley State. Split the defenders, and Lewis is called for the foul. That was unfortunate for Jackson State that time. Howard had a wide open three point shot that rattled in and out and would have cut this lead down to six points. Unfortunate for them. They needed to knock that three down. They got to, right now, I just feel that Mississippi Valley State is in, it's in the danger zone. They knocked down a couple threes and started to score. They can extend this lead, and then they'll have control of the tempo of this game. You know, we've seen somewhat of a contrast in styles between Sean Woods and Sylvester Anderson. What are, what are the differences in their coaching styles? Well, right now, Sylvester Anderson, he's lost his three top guys, and he's playing with a lot of young players out there. So he wants to control the tempo. He wants to slow it down. He has Gregory and Geddes inside, two big big bodies in there. They can get it inside, so they want to slow the pace down. He wants to play zone to try to slow down the slow down Mississippi Valley State, extend it out so they won't shoot the three-point shots. But Mississippi Valley and Sean Woods team had a lot of success with pressure and knocking down three shots. They want to get up and down. They want the top offensive teams, not only in this conference, but in the country. They want to play fast and get up and down and shoot those three and create turnovers and get in an open floor. One thing you can say about Jackson State, even though they're down 11 right now, they've hung with them in the rebounding category. And Delta Devils are 43rd in the nation in rebounding. Right now, it's a dangerous time right now. They need to get a, uh, need to get a score inside to slow this team down. If they knocked down a couple threes. They really would control the tempo. The lob! But they're going to get it going the other way. A great look by Keasley Stewart, but it goes for naught. Keasley Stewart. That's his first. Media We've got our first media timeout of the second half. Mississippi Valley State has pushed the lead back up to 11, the largest lead of the game for the Delta Devils looking to stay unbeaten.
Now let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Taco Bell. Kevin Burwell and Brent Arrington have been keys for the Mississippi Valley State team. This guy's been knocking down three point shots, getting on the offensive glass, really attacking this Jackson State offense on the perimeter. And now, Willie Reedus and Kelsey Howard have been trying their best to keep Jackson State involved in the game. Both teams starting off the second half extremely cool, if not cold, from the uh, field, shooting a combined three for 14 from the field in the second half. Both teams are trying to find their way offensively. And see who's going to step up, and take control of this game. Right now, the Jackson State elects to stay in this 2 3 zone. Beware of the three point shot. Leading scorer, Terrace Joyner, number three in green, still on the bench, saddled with four fouls. Burwell tries to continue the scoring binge, but comes up empty. Out of bounds, it's going to go to Jackson State. Now, good recognition right now. I love the rotation that time by Pew rotating over on the back side to stop the Jackson State drive and drawing the charge and creating a turnover. 11 point game, Jackson State looking to cut it to single digits again. They've had some success going inside. Let's see if they can get it inside to Gregory. Or read us in there. They've had some success in there. Those two big guys are tough to handle. I'd like to see him get inside and get Crosby in foul trouble, get Studevant in foul trouble. Because Mississippi Valley State is, is thin on the inside, and if they can get it inside and get him in trouble, foul trouble, they can get back in this game. 15 on the shot clock, coming up on 15 minutes to go in the game. Here's Reedus. Hard off the iron. Here come the Delta Devils. They've got numbers. Hugh gets fouled. Whistle came early. Let's see if it's fouled before the shot. This team is quick. They get the ball off the glass, and they out and running. And you can see Pew really getting out on the break. You better be aware of this guy because so Pew can get up. It is that time. Howard really challenged that shot. If he didn't challenge it, I think Q was going to drop it down with a fantastic dunk. Yeah, he's explosive, isn't he? Love this kid. This kid gets off, comes off the bench, and he gives them an emotional lead. He's fiery. He can knock down the three. He can really get after it on the defensive end. He's got five points tonight and helps the Delta Devils to their largest lead of the game, 45-32. Rich, I mentioned danger time right here. Don't want to get in the running game. Left hand, nice take by Keasley Stewart, his first two of the game. Keasley did a good job in that first half, coming off the bench and attacking the basket. Q from distance. His second three-pointer of the game, he has eight. Don't let Pew get going. He's, he's explosive offensively. And right now, they're doing it without Joyner. Joyner and... And Burwell's kind of been quiet, but Jordan's not even in the game. And right now, a dangerous time right now. The tempo is in favor of Mississippi Valley State right now with a large lead with 14 points. Willie Reedus. <laughs> a little dipsy do to the hole for oh, Willie Reedus finishing with the left hand. Nifty move from the dancing bear that time, Rich. What a move by this kid. Switching over with the left hand. Wow. He showed, he showed he's had a nice little move there. I think no one was more surprised than he was that he was wide open in the lane. <laughs> wide open, but he had to flip it over his uh, left shoulder with his left hand. What a move. Another three. Off the mark, Reedus clears. Take, take your time right now if you're... Jackson State, get it inside to the two big fellas, Reedus and Gregory. They've been effective in there. Be patient. There's plenty of time to get back in this game. Chance to cobble together a little momentum for Tavester Anderson's club. Off the follow. No good. Reedus again. 
and one. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's the dancing bear, Rich. I think we've got a new nickname for the Jackson State player, Willie Reedus, the sophomore out of Morton, Mississippi. Oh, watch this play here, Rich. Look at this. Slips through the defense. A little scoop shot here. Now the big fella's working inside for old-fashioned three-point play attacking the offensive glass. He missed the first six games this year with an eye injury, but he scored double digits four times. Make it five now with 12 tonight. I like the big fella in there. Willie Reed Reedus has really brought this team back. He's fighting inside there and battling Studevant and Crosby. And that's been a key for them trying to hang in this game. Still a nine point lead and plenty of time left to get back in it. Willie Reedus is the first Tiger in double figures. And it's back down to a nine point game. Here's Burwell. And he continues the hot shooting from downtown Jackson. Well, that's a smart play by Mississippi Valley State. Instead of trying to shoot the three from outside, they attacked inside, inside out play, and they found the defense had to collapse. And Burwell was wide open, and you know what he's going to do. He's going to knock it down. Again, Willie Reedus, a man possessed. He has 15. Reedus right now has the hot hand. Getting the ball inside. They can't handle him in there right now. As you can see, Crosby doesn't want to foul. He wants to stay in the game. And I will continue to go inside to Reedus and Gregory. Nice little teardrop in the lane for Burwell. He has a game high 23 points. And you see that dribble drive motion offense of Sean Woods really taking effect. They knock down the three, force the defense to come out. And then Burwell can drive the lane. Oh, that's a really, that's like a pro shot there. That little teardrop there amongst the trees kind of lobbed it up over the big fellas for a little easy two. That's that's a difficult shot to make. Smart play by Burwell. Burwell now has a career high 23 points, career high eight field goals, and a career high six three point field goals. It's been a and career it, night for the it, Delta Devil. And it's Burwell inside with the teardrop for two. The Delta Devils back on top by double digits. It's a 12-point game over Jackson State, 11.46 to go. Rich Hollenberg, Derek Wittenberg, and Coach, take us inside the play. Yeah, inside the play right here, Mississippi Valley State has had success by shooting a three, but now they elect to get the ball inside. This is textbook on how you attack a zone. You hit the middle, drawing the defense in, and now, as the defense sucks in, Burwell's wide open for the three-point shot on the backside. Excellent play by Sean Woods' team and excellent execution. Kevin Burwell, number one in the conference in assists. He averages just under five a game, but tonight it's been his scoring touch that has led the Delta Devils to a 12-point advantage. Rich, he's assisting the basket right now. This guy's knocking down shots from everywhere. You have to be aware of Burwell. He has the hot hand. 
you know, he's with six three point shots. You have to find him if you're going to stay in this zone defense. Kelsey Howard now has 11 points on the night. He's the second Tiger from Jackson State in double digits. And it's a 10 point game. What does Tavester Anderson's club have to do to chip away at this lead? Well, they're doing it right now. They, 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 man to man for the first time all game. Let's see how this is effective. There's a double team. Pugh from the corner. Rattles around and in. His third three pointer, he's got 11. Yeah. Good change of defense that time, but you know, all these guys are capable. Pugh and Burwell and Jordan and Crosby, these guys can knock down a three point shot at any time. And look how dangerous it looked like Jackson State was going to get back in bed. Oh, Willie Reedus from all angles on the court knocks down the jumper. He has 17. Reedus says, uh, let's get back in this game. I, give him the ball in there. He's got the hot hand. And he's finding he having his way with Crosby inside. Good defense. They almost come away with the steal. It's a possession arrow. And it's staying with Mississippi Valley State. But Keasley Stewart did a good job on the double team on Crosby there. Well, Stewart, he's a feisty little guy. He's been attacking the best. He's giving him a lot of energy off the bench. And He's trying to fire him up and get him back in this game. It's an 11 point lead, but I just feel that Jackson State, if they can make a little run, they can get back in it, but they have to defend the three point shot. You talked about this early when the Delta Devils were so hot from distance, saying Jackson State can't trade threes for twos. Well, now we're 20 minutes later, and there's 10 and a half minutes to go in this game, and yet that seems what like what's still happening. Jackson State really hasn't even shot the ball from distance that often, let alone made the three-point field. Well, that's not their strong point. They're not going to shoot the three-point oh, shot. They want to get the ball inside. But more importantly, they have to do a better job of defending the three on the other end and, and extending that zone a little bit to make sure you be in touch with all these terrific three-point shaders. Paul Crosby makes his first free throw of the night. He has nine points. And you know that three-point percentage and even those three-point attempts would be increased by a lot if Gennaro Bush and Christian Williams were on the floor. Yeah, if they had those two, it, this game would be a lot different right now. But right now, they had to go practically all season without those guys. And right now, they still got a chance if they can get some easy buckets and, uh, and stop them on the defense of And there's an easy one right there, Darrell Taylor with his sixth point of the night. And they're hanging in there. They're fighting right now. The tempo is still in Mississippi Valley's favor. Now they're going man to man. And they leave very well open. All alone. How do you let that happen? <laughs> right now, just a, a mix up on defense that time. A little wrap around by Crosby. And didn't switch on that call, didn't communicate that time. That's what happened for the young team. And they took advantage of it and knocked the three down. And Jackson State is feeling the ire of head coach Tavester Anderson, who is incensed that they let Kevin Burwell all alone at the top of the key. And it's Burwell with the hot hand knocking down the three for Mississippi Valley State.
And if you've never watched a SWAC game on ESPNU, sometimes the crowds could be as entertaining as the play on the floor, but it's good to be green tonight again. The Delta Devils 16-0 in conference with a win tonight. They mark the all-time SWAC regular season mark with 17 wins in conference. And the Delta Devils faithful have traveled the two-hour drive from Itabina to Jackson. And right now they're being treated to a big lead, 14 points for the Delta Devils. And this Civil State's dancing with three-point shots right now. This team is on fire outside, knocking down those threes. And Jackson State cannot trade twos for threes. There's a foul on the floor. Yeah, if you can knock him down too, Rich, from all over the corner, you have to recognize, you have to be there on the catch versus these three-point shooters because they got their hands ready and they have four guys at all times that are capable of knocking a three-point shot down. And no sooner do we talk about William Pugh and his prowess from three-point land that he collects his fourth foul and has to sit on the bench. So Joyner with four, Pugh with four, you have to assume the offense is going to be falling even more so on the shoulders of Kevin Burwell. Oh, yeah, and Crosby can get involved as well. He's been quiet in this second half, and I'm sure they're going to get him involved in the, in, in the latter part of this game. To the foul to by Studevant. Right now, that time had to stop the foul that time. Jackson State, good job of really driving into the defense in the middle of that defense and creating the foul to try to slow this this Silver Valley team down out of knock down these free throws in order to get back in the game. Studevant whistled for his fourth foul. It's not panic time yet for Sean Woods seeing as his team has a 14 point cushion but could come into play in the waning minutes of the game. Well, that was unfortunate to have Jackson State miss the two free throws. Now it's danger time. It's nine minutes to go. They have to, they have to play man to man, and that's in Mississippi Valley State's favor right now. Because this team is very dangerous against the first man. Another three-pointer. This one from Brent Arrington, his second three of the game. This team is on fire. Excellent execution. That little double screen right there. I used to call that play box one. You come off that double screen from the baseline. You had to communicate on defense. If you don't, it's going to be a wide open shot at one of the dangerous shots on, in, in, the, in the court. Right there in the middle for an easy three-point shot. Reedus, talk about an easy three. He's going to go the traditional route and try to make a three-point play after the foul on the hoop. Yeah, Rich Reedus is really attacking the offensive glass. They go inside to him. He creates a lot of space in there, using his body to get inside and create that foul. And now he's got a chance for a three-point play. And they've just whistled Sean Woods for a technical foul. Technical foul charts to the coach of Valley. Sean Woods not pleased with the foul call that sends Willie Reedus to the line. Reedus has a season high 19 points and eight rebounds as well. Not too many people in the SWAC can muscle Paul Crosby out of the lane like Reedus just did. Well, he's, he really got the leverage that time. The key to him getting that offensive he used his lower body Rich to create space to get into his body and that of creating that space allow him to get that offensive rebound and now he had to come over top in the foul trouble. And just the second miss from Kelsey Howard from the free throw line tonight. Well, Rich, that's always up. a tough call by the official. I never I never was comfortable with if, if official if a coach is way on the other side and you may, and you call a technical foul without giving him a warning. I, I didn't know what he said. I don't know what he heard from way over there. But that was a that was an interesting call because the referee that, that assessed the technical foul was way on the other side of the court. So I don't know if Sean made some uh, made some remarks or some gestures or what have you, but he caught a technical foul from the other side of the court. Reedus completes the three point play. He has 20, and it's Mississippi Valley State 64, Jackson State 51. Sometimes an official just has a list of magic words in their head. If you hit one of them, you're going to get teed up. Well, if you if you show any kind of gestures and you show the referee up and he can see it, if it looks bad, you know he could he's got the right to call that that foul. But 
I just think I like for officials to but he showed good communication. That even though he called the technical foul, he went over and they had a discussion. And that's good communication right there by coach and referee just to explain why he called the technical foul. I think that was that, that was nice work by the officials. Now on the flip side of things, Willie Reedus just collects his fourth personal foul. So he's going to have to take a seat next to Tavester Anderson, which is bad news for Jackson State. He's been their best player by far tonight. No question, but you know, Gregory was effective in there in that first half. I like seeing him go to number 44, Gregory, and inside Jackson State because he was effective as well. Studevant, good hands on Jackson State defense. It stays Delta Devils Man, basketball. Right there, it looks like Jackson State Rich is trying to creep back in the game, but they have to get some stops on this end. They, they have to stop Mississippi Valley State from scoring right now. Well, they, they in man to man, and this is a dangerous for Jackson State because Mississippi State can score from anywhere on the court. Good hands by Keesley Stewart, knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay Mississippi Valley basketball. They have a 13 point lead and the ball, 7.56 to go, looking for win number 17 without a loss in conference. Welcome back to ESPN Big Monday presented by Bud Light where Mississippi Valley State on the way to remaining undefeated at 17 and 0 with a win tonight they're up 13 on Jackson State. Tomorrow night ESPNU as a college basketball doubleheader first at 7 Eastern Ole Miss takes on Arkansas then at 9 Eastern Seth Curry and Duke battle ACC rival Wake Forest the home court of college hoops on ESPNU ESPN 3 and also streaming live on watchespn.com and the watch ESPN app Tuesday night coverage begins with the whip at 630 Eastern. And you see that Blue Devils backcourt Austin Rivers. Certainly not playing like a freshman this year, is he, Derek? He's an outstanding player. I, I teased Doc because he's a whole lot better shooter than his father when uh -huh. I played against his father. Doc was a point guard and facilitator, an outstanding uh, player himself, but he doesn't shoot like his son. Corjay Cox, nice athletic move in the lane, follows his own miss. He has six. Biggest lead of the game. Delta Devils up 15. And they're running out of time here. Seven minutes to go. It's time. Left on the clock, but they got to get some scores and they got to score quickly. And they got to stop them on the defensive end. They haven't been able to stop Mississippi Valley State at all on the defense. And I know you don't have to panic and start firing up threes. There's one from Kelsey Howard. That's their first three pointer of the game, only their fifth three point attempt. At some point, Tavester Anderson's got to say, guys, let's pull it back a little bit and shoot some long range jumpers. Well, they got to step it up, but more importantly, they have to step it up on defense. They have to get some stops down here. Inside Crosby. They're going to count the basket. No basket. They're going to say the foul is going to be on the floor. Sidney Coleman whistled for the foul on Crosby. So it'll be Valley ball under the basket. Power move that time by Crosby. He's good inside there. He likes to shoot the three, but he's just as effective on the inside as well. Now, Mississippi Valley State doesn't have to rush. They have a 12 point lead with seven minutes to go. And they can take their time and really find a good shot and try to get Crosby involved offensively. Crosby from the high post. He misses the dunk. Almost had a frustration foul called there.
Howard. Tried for back-to-back -back threes, no dice. And he's trapped in the corner, and he calls a timeout. Jackson State's going to have two timeouts remaining for the final six minutes and 20 seconds of this contest. Wednesday night, ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader, first at 7 Eastern, St. John's, and their fantastic freshmen take on Ashton Gibbs in Pittsburgh. Then at 9 Eastern, it's a Big Ten matchup between Iowa and Nebraska, the home court of college hoops on ESPNU, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app Wednesday night. Coverage begins with the whip at 6.30 Eastern. And you talk about the longest winning streaks in Division I basketball right now. Kentucky owns it with 20, but Drexel is not far behind at 17 in the Colonial. Congratulations to Bruiser Flint and company for that CAA championship. And Mississippi Valley State, don't sweat the Devils. The They're devil. only one win behind. Uh, they're doing an outstanding job. But it's just Bruiser Smiley Flint <laughs> that was the assistant coach for John Calipari at UMass. An outstanding season. And let me tell you something, committee. You better put Drexel in the tournament. I told you last year, VCU, now it's Drexel. Whether to win the tournament or not, Drexel deserved to be in the NCAA tournament. And just to piggyback on that, thought, I just had VCU in Richmond on Saturday night. And I'll tell you, they deserve it whether they win the conference championship or not. I think that's a two-bid league. Off to Marcus Jones. Here comes Mississippi Valley State. In the corner, Cox took his eye off the ball. He was looking for a baseline three before he actually caught the ball. And right now, Joe Lenardi has Mississippi Valley State at number 67. But look about who's the last four in and who's the first four out. Do you have any discrepancies here, Mr. Well, Bracketologist? Well, let me tell you something. That's all numbers, okay? Joe, I think he does a great job with numbers. The bottom line, it's not over until all the games are finished, and we're going to see. We can't determine right now who's going to be in out until all the conference tournaments are finished right now. But right now, regardless of what they do, Drexel should be in the tournament. Nice up and in for Darrell Taylor off the window. He has eight points. And it's a 10-point lead. They're creeping back in the game. Five minutes to go. Plenty of time. Let's see if Jackson State can get some stops down here on the defensive end. Almost all the scoring for Mississippi Valley State has come from outside. Paul Crosby changes that in the lane with his 11th point of the night. What a tough play inside by Crosby. He said he's going to step up and take over this game in the second half and try to bring Mississippi Valley home for victory on here on the road. Under five to go. Sylvester Anderson's club has hit one three-pointer the entire game. That's going to have to change in the waning minutes if they have a chance to upset the Delta Devils. Don't panic right here. Go inside. Try to get the easy two and chip away at it. And it's going the other way. Great defensive effort by Core J. Cox. Yeah, Rich. Crosby right here showing his nifty inside stuff, bowling his way to the basket. That time just overpowering the Jackson State inside play. And let's look for Crosby again inside. I'm sure they're going to go back to him because he's so effective down in the inside, or he can knock down the three as well. Back-to-back -back SWAC Player of the Week awards for Paul Crosby. Hit back-to-back three-point game-winning shots. This evening, he hasn't needed those kind of theatrics. Now Jackson State needs a basket right here. We can get right back in it. And they got just that. Back-to-back -back threes for Kelsey Howard. He has 18, and they're as close as they've been since five minutes into the first half. And again, remember, this team was out without the three best players and the player of the year, Bush, and they're hanging right in this game. Four minutes to go. They need some stops to get back in it. Only nine points down right now. A little floater by Burwell, no good. Tips it to Crosby, and Crosby finishes. What a smart play that time, Rich, by Burwell. Tipping the ball to Crosby, recognize he's under the basket, and a little fella getting there for offensive rebound. What a big play to stop this momentum. Howard getting hot at the right time. He has 20 points. How long does Sean Woods wait to get 
Terrence Joyner back in the game with four fouls. All right, now I, I think they're in good shape. They're still up nine with three minutes to go. I think he's going to play it out. Those guys been sitting on the bench for a long time. I think he's going to going to wait and see what happens after this possession. Burwell lost the handle. The whistle blows. We'll have to see whose ball it is. Right now, it's it's still Jackson State trying to get involved, but it's the little fell Burwell tapping it to Crosby for two for Mississippi Valley State. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Life. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Rich Hollenberg, Derek Wittenberg, ESPN Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Mississippi Valley State can't notch that 17th win just yet. They're up 70 to 61 on Jackson State. And let's take a look at who's ruling the court. Brought to you by Verizon. Yeah, Burwell, he's been knocking him down all over the place. He's got his feet set. He's shooting from uh, at least 27, 28 feet. They, they didn't recognize him in the zone defense, and he's been knocking him down forever. This guy's an outstanding shooter, outstanding point, point guard, and he is the key to this outstanding victory. This run that Mississippi Valley State's been on 16 in a row, looking to make it 17 in a row. So Kevin Burwell rules the court, brought to you by Verizon. And yet Jackson State, as close as they've been since we can remember, they jumped out to a 2-0 lead, and that was the only lead of the game for the Tigers. Now Darrell Taylor's at the line, shooting two, looking an inch ever closer. And right now, three minutes to go, Rich. There's plenty of time. They have to get some stops on the offensive, knock this free throw down, and cut the lead to eight. They have plenty of time to get back in this game. One for two from the free throw line, nine points for Taylor. And it's interesting, they started off so well from the free throw line in the first half. They tailed off a little in the second half, and that could really hurt them in their comeback attempt. Under three to go. Arrington has it swatted by Taylor. That time, a little trap defense that time. They tried to attack the basket. But Jackson State says, no, not in here. Swatted the way. Right now, they're going to trap a little bit to try to force the tempo. And Jordan's back in the game, Rich. And now let's see if he'll get involved on the offensive end. Terrence Joyner, the leading scorer on this Delta Devils team. And Burwell has taken that mantle tonight and run with it. 28 points for Kevin Burwell, the senior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What a little lefty floater. What a big time play that time. Stopping this Jackson State momentum. Howard can't match the three. There's the tip. Arrington, Burwell's all alone. In with the left hand, and Burwell's got 30. <laughs> this kid's having an unbelievable game here tonight. Burwell is just taking over this game. He's getting steals. 
Layups, floaters, knocking them a three-point shot. He's doing it all for Mississippi Valley State. Inside. Fouls called. And the Tigers will go back to the line. And this has happened almost a half dozen times tonight, Derek, where we think that Jackson State could get over the hump and really make a game of it, and then Sean Wood's club goes on a run. Yeah, they always answer. They have veteran guys. That Burwell's a senior. He's been here before. He steps up and make a big play. If it's not Burwell, it's Crosby, the junior. They step up, and as Jackson State looks like they're making a run, they stop the run. And here's what's at stake again. Jackson State has sputtered, especially since they lost Gennaro Bush and Christian Williams. They're 5 and 10. They might drop to 5 and 11. Mississippi Valley State will tie the all time regular season wins record in the SWAC with a win tonight. They've already locked up the regular season title and the number one seed in the conference. That tournament starts March 7th in Garland, Texas. Here's Joyner all alone. Maybe left two alone on that three ball. Well, really didn't need to take that three because you have an eight point lead. And Howard yeah, on the other end, he is 23. Now you allowed uh, Jackson State to kind of creep back in it. It's nine points, but it's a minute 27 seconds to go. And Derek, if the SWAC tournament started today, this is exactly how it would look with Mississippi Valley State at the top of the bracket. And Lo and behold, Jackson State is at the bottom of the bracket. They'd have to take on a real solid Texas Southern team in the first round. Well, you could throw the records out. Everybody gets a second chance at life. You go, that's why they have the conference tournament. Now the pressure's on Mississippi Valley State. They, they've got, they got the lead. They got the number one seed. And everybody will be shooting for because the winner gets the automatic bid. And here's some numbers you need to know. Seven is the non-power six teams in the top 25 with Murray State, Sylvester Anderson's former team, ranked at number nine again. They're doing an outstanding job there. And Isaiah Poole, outstanding guard there. That's tremendous. And there's another team that's going to win the regular season. They should be in the and they should be in the tournament, barring if they don't win the conference tournament. So I'd like to see Murray State automatically in. Drexel automatically in, and maybe George Mason, if they can upset and win that conference tournament, three team from the Colonial. Coming up next, Big Monday presented by Bud Light continues with Big 12 basketball, Texas A&M and Baylor. Dave Fleming and Sean Farnham have the call on that game. That's coming up immediately following this SWAC contest. And back to Mississippi Valley State. You talk about the rarefied air that they're in, just numbers wise. Only undefeated teams in conference right now, Kentucky, they take on Georgia March 1st. Long Beach State out of the Big West. Texas Arlington in the Southland. And we'll even give Utah Valley State a nod, even though they only have six teams in their conference. Unbelievable job by all those programs. It's, it's, hard, it's tough enough to w win a conference, let alone going undefeated in conference. So outstanding job by all those programs and those coaches. Coming up on one minute to go. Time the enemy of the Jackson State Tigers. And they'll get a foul. Mississippi Valley State at 16 and 0. And they could boast the fact that not even Kentucky has won as many games in conference as they have. Well, I don't know if they want to, they don't want to chirp too loud. They might get Kentucky in the first round, right? If they go to the instant play tournament, so. Well, one thing you can almost guarantee, if this Mississippi Valley State team does in, indeed go on to win the SWAC Conference Tournament, they'll be one of those first four games in Dayton, Ohio. Kelsey Howard with 26 points. He's quietly put together a spectacular night for Jackson State, hitting four three-pointers all in the second half. 26 He's points is by He's far good. the team high. Just needed more help here. Read us. Willie Reedus has come off the bench and really sparked him and tried to keep him in this basketball game. They need a third score because this this Mississippi Valley State team they can score from from anywhere on the court. Threes. They got Crosby inside. This team is number one offensive team in the conference, and you have to match them offensively. And right now, uh, they did, Jackson State just don't have the offensive firepower to match Mississippi Valley State. And as much of a night. 
career wise as Kevin Burwell's had you look down this roster for Mississippi Valley State Paul Crosby has 13 Arrington 11 William Pugh has 12. So a, a fairly balanced scoring attack despite the fact that Burwell completely went off for 30. Balance they can score their veteran basketball team. They've been there. They on a hot streak. They're in a zone right now when you win 16 games. I was fortunate enough at the Matha High School to go undefeated and win 28 in a row and win the national championship for Morgan Wooden. You're in a zone when you win that many games. You just you, you just in a rhythm. You feel confident. You feel like you can win every basketball game. Love what Sean Wood said about his team. They have more seniors than a church bingo night. That's going to win you a lot of ball games though when they, you have that kind of experience. Those are, these are vet, it's a veteran basketball team. They've been there. They've been through all the wars. They went through that grueling schedule rich uh, 11 games on the road against the power six conference and come out of that mentally and physically healthy and have run through the swag in the regular season here. They certainly got their share of frequent flyer miles. They went as far as Iowa State and Wisconsin not to mention staying here in the south against the Arkansas the Mississippi's the Florida's of the world. <laughs> Hats off to Sean Woods and his program and. Talk to Dr. Oliver, their president. They're very happy, excited about this basketball team, and this team still has a chance to win that conference tournament. They're still on the roll. But the pressure is going to be on them because they're all the teams are going to be shooting for Mississippi Valley State. 27.3 to go, and Jackson State still refuses to lay down and go away. It's a seven point lead for Mississippi Valley State. And you have to think as hot as they were from the free throw line of the first half that's as equally cold as they've been in the second half. If they knock down a number of these free throws in the second half we could be talking about a one or maybe a two possession ball game. Oh absolutely and they could have got the ball inside but more importantly they had to play better defense because this team is very capable of getting hot and they had some miscues on defense leaving some Burwell open for some wide open three point shots didn't double Crosby in there and they made some key uh, buckets to stop the, the Jackson State run. Now Tavester Anderson substituting offense for defense. Crosby number six in the in the conference in free throw shooting calmly knocks both of those down to give him 15 for the night. And a quiet 15 for Crosby. But he's all he made timely buckets to really stop those Jackson State runs at times. They opted for the two, came up empty. Crosby came away with the rebound, and that'll seal it. They're gonna call off the troops. Kevin Burwell, a career night for Mississippi Valley State. 30 points to lead the Delta Devils to their 17th consecutive win all in conference. Tigers 69. Your final score Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils 78 the Jackson State Tigers 69. That's our final score from Jackson Mississippi for Derek Wittenberg and our entire ESPNU crew. I'm Rich Hollenberg coming up next on ESPNU it's Big Monday presented by Bud Light and it continues with Big 12 college basketball Texas Tech at Baylor. For more information log on to ESPN.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from Jackson Mississippi where the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State and Sean Woods remain undefeated in the SWAC at 17 and 0.